Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com, faced with five sparkling wines, and uh, have we got five different countries? No, not quite five different countries. Uh, once upon a time we would have had five different countries, but maybe we'll get onto that with wine number five. Uh, but uh, we'll start off in Italy. Uh, Prosecco uh, and Harvey Nichols' uh, Val Dobbiadini Prosecco Superiore. It hasn't got a vintage on, but um, I mean, with, with Prosecco, what they tend to do is is get the youngest possible uh, out there. Uh, this differs from the four wines that follow um, in that um, the, the, the other four are made by a method called, um, uh, depending on uh, whether you want to offend the Champenoise, if you do, you call it Method Champenoise, uh, because made in the Champagne method, regular wine fermented, then shoved in a bottle with some yeast and sugar, does its secondary fermentation in the bottle, whip the cork out, um, shove it in some ice first to freeze it, whip the cork out, shove another cork in with maybe a little bit of sweetener to, um, uh, to uh, uh, Mary Poppins it on its way uh, and Robert et ton oncle. Um, but, um, uh, so that's the method champenoise or method traditional or traditional method or whatever you want to call it. The, f the wines two to five are made in that way. But the first one, uh, Prosecco, uh, is made by a slightly uh, easier method, if you want to call it that. So they, you, they make a regular wine and then rather than shove it in a bottle to do its second fermentation, which is the one that gives it the fizz, uh, they shove it in a big pressurised tank um, and, then, uh, and then they bottle it from there. So give it a whirl. Classic Prosecco, peach and apple spume. You know when you go to some restaurants and uh, uh, they have uh, they think, oh, I'm still stuck in 2005, and uh, they produce this apple foam, um, and uh, or spume, some, uh, where, do, where does the word spume come from? Anyway, it's that type of character. Soft, peachy, and then this uh, rounded, uh, it's a weird thing, mixture of ripe and underripe apple, so, or very ripe green apple. It smells good. Young, fresh, um, there's a slightly toffee-like uh, richness to it, um, and as I say, this peach and apple, juicy, friendly, uh, quite low in acidity. So it's uh, I always think of, of uh, Prosecco as the Pinot Grigio of the uh, of the sparkling world, uh, which sounds like I'm damning it with faint praise. Um, but just as there is so-so uh, Pinot Grigio and so-so Prosecco, so there is high-end Pinot Grigio and high-end Prosecco. I wouldn't say this were high-end, but um, it's certainly not your bog-standard Prosecco. It's got um, a little bit of that, what I call the pumice stone uh, mineral character going through it, uh, but the main thing is this soft, rounded, fleshy fruit. And just when you think it's going to go that little bit too fleshy, a little bit, bit of that pumice comes through and leaving your mouth satisfied and waiting for more. I like that. Next one, we're in Spain uh, with uh, Carver and Coronu Reina Maria Cristina Blanc de Noir Brut Reserva 2008. Can't remember the last time I bought one of those uh, little orange and yellow fruit salad sweets, but the, the, there's that character in there. Uh, I don't know whether it's a bit of citrus and a bit of cranberry or something like that, um, but uh, it smells like it's going to have that a, a good mixture of quite ripe fruit, not overripe, and um, uh, zesty freshness. Fascinating because it's got this, uh, it's got the ripeness, and, and then it's got the mineral and the acidity to rein it all in. So. Just when you think that peach, that uh, that very ripe orange, it's weird, it's got a ripe citrus edge and then a clean, crisp citrus edge um, and that touch of cranberry, maybe even some plum in there. Um, it, it's, it, they're all being enclosed by this structure. And uh, the, the finish, just when you think it's going to go too, uh, too fat, too voluptuous, it's all reined in. Um, it's, um, it's one of those that tastes... Uh, there is a touch of sweetness there uh, to round out the acidity, but the finish you're left with is crisp, and fresh and zesty and makes you want to come back for more. But I can't because I've got another wine to do. Maybe I'll come back for more, for for more later. Uh, so we're in Champagne with the next one. So uh, country number three, France. Uh, Champagne Canard du Chêne, authentic brute, as opposed to what? I'm not sure, but uh, authentic brute, uh, uh, RRP, £27. I don't know what makes this authentic and other wines from Canard du Chêne inauthentic, but uh, maybe now isn't the time to ask that question. Well, I don't know if you can see that, it's still frothing in the glass and uh, uh, as if it's, it's a, quite a young wine that's gone into that bottle. Uh, and I stick my nose in and it, yeah, it does feel like a young, very fresh, uh, very quite simple wine. Um, maybe a little bit more time in this bottle or 
on the lees before they pulled the cork out would have been of benefit. Um, as it is today, it, yeah, it just smells like it, it's going to be okay. It doesn't smell like it's going to be. Uh, uh, there's, there's a bit of citrus. There's a bit of um, a slight nutty brioche character, but um, maybe not enough of them. Feels like a wine that needs something adding to it. It feels like uh, there's 80% of the wine, and it needs. Well, two things it needs. Uh, it's got the, it's got it's got a bit of Christmas, um, and it's got a bit of uh, nutty richness. Uh, what I would like to see is a little bit more uh, backbone instilled into it. Uh, so you've got the Christmas, but maybe a more minerally character in there, and then I'd like to see. Um, yeah, more flavours going on there because it, it, it does feel like a simple wine. Uh, sim uh, flavours both from uh, the way in which it's been aged, but also from the vineyard in the first place. But um, um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to get them um, if I wait even with that bottle. But um, let's see whether I get them. Uh, we are in England now, country number four. Uh, and I'm not sure what you think about this word. They're, they're looking for a word to describe English sparkling wine. And these guys have come up with Britannia or Britain or I don't know how you're pr supposed to pronounce it. But um, I don't know whether it's supposed to rhyme with Champagne or Britannia or what. Um, Champagne, Britannia, Coat Sincerely anyway, Blanc de Blanc. Uh, and I'm not sure whether, I don't think it's got a vintage on here, but if I remember correctly, it's from uh, it's from roughly 2008 stroke nine, but uh, I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, um, Christian Seeley will come round in his very dapper bow tie and point at me and say, Simon, no. Anyway, sorry, Christian. It smells much more grown up than the one before. Um, it smells uh, two things. Uh, it smells softer, broader, Three things. Riper. Um, it's, it's strange uh, thinking of uh, England as being riper. Maybe that uh, that ripeness is to do with it's uh, uh, they've got more control over the, over the grapes they've got here. But um, uh, there is a very ripe, but very ripe green apple, very ripe citrus, very ripe lemon and lime, rather than uh, anything that's uh, a, a more southerly fruit. So, um, uh, but then uh, there's there's a breadth to it as well, and there's a breadiness, and uh, it smells it smells pretty classy. I like that. Um, and uh, I was going to say, I was going to say it's, it's nice broad flavours. Broad is maybe a bit misleading. Uh, what it has got is it's got um, uh, apple and rhubarb crumble richness. Uh, how's about that? Uh, so it's got this uh, what I call ripe, slightly cooked greenness. Does that make sense? If you imagine you're getting Bramley apples on the green side, rhubarb on that, uh, that, that sort of like, if you have it without uh, cooking it and adding sugar, then you're a bit, it's, it's both of them are on that wincing side. But if you've got a little bit of sweetness in the wine, and I think they have got some here, um, and you, 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 uh, the, the fruit is not on that raw side, um, it, the elevage, the, the way in which it's been aged in the bottle has um, softened it, given it this uh, yeasty edge, um, then you get something that's a bit more interesting. And maybe yeasty is the wrong word. Uh, you know sometimes if you have an uncooked cake mix and you get the, you, you taste it, uh, or, or you, you undercook a cake, let's just say it that way, and there's a bit in the middle that's still uh, semi-solid. Uh, it's got that character too. But also there's like a, a hedgerow uh, herbiness and maybe a little bit of blackberries, but uh, almost hawthorn-like character in there too. Um, I do like that. And... Um, I mean, I, I think this is their first vintage of the Blanc de Blanc, and uh, bully for them. Final wine, and this is where the four-stroke five countries comes in, because once upon a time Alsace uh, wasn't part of France. It is now. Uh, so this is Cremont d'Alsace from the Domaine Fister. Um, and has he got a vintage on? Uh, Brut, non-vintage, no. And uh, I have... Uh, Brut Blanc de Blanc made from Chardonnay, Pinot Blanc and Auxerrois and uh, aged for quite a long time from the look of it, two or three years, two to uh, uh, disgorged after 24 to 36 months of aging on the lees. I think that's one of the secrets about uh, make, if, if you're going to make wines this style, uh, a lot of people just think, oh, if I do the bottle fermentation uh, and then sh shove a cork in, it'll be fine because it's uh, method traditional stroke champenoise. Uh, well, I think they, the length of the lees aging is um, as important as anything. And I, th I think that if you do it by the method that they used for uh, Prosecco, the Charmat method, um, and leave it on the lees doing its second fermentation for a long time, then you have the chance of doing a wine that uh, is very similar in character to uh, the ones that have actually done their second fermentation in bottle. But here you get that um, roundness, uh, maybe a little touch of spice, or am I being seduced by the fact that it says Alsace on the label? Uh, but yeah, the, the breadiness, uh, again, that little touch of uh, cooked apple, uh, and uh, it smells good. 
rounded, rich, soft. It's got this apple-y, yeasty breadiness. Um, I was saying that the Cano du Chien maybe had something missing. I'd say that there was just maybe something missing here. I'd almost like to add a dollop of the uh, Coates and Sealy to that to just give it a little bit more fruit. Um, so it, there, there is this, um, what I call a puddingy, bready character, uh, and this soft, creamy, uh, again, back to the apple spume of the first one, uh, touch of that, but uh, yeah, maybe it lacks, lacks a little bit of aristocratic uh, fruit in there, uh, which the Coates and Sealy seems to have. Uh, probably my favourite. Uh, Mary Christina ran a close second, but um, uh, England won, rest of the world, uh, nil, I think. Hey, see you soon.